This is an ASMR channel now. Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to Musings of a Fox. Usually in April for my birthday, I do a makeup look for whatever I wore to my birthday dinner. I love to get all glammed up to the hilt and I get myself a new dress and I just have a really gorgeous night with my friends. Unfortunately, in the way things are, that's not going to happen. This year my birthday was cancelled. Um, a lot of birthdays this spring have been cancelled and I do want to say up front that it is okay to grieve all of our plans that have been cancelled. I don't think there are many of us who aren't aware of the tragedies and the heartbreaks that are happening all over the world right now, but there are a lot of us who have things that we had planned that are now cancelled and a lot of those things were supposed to be memories we were making with our friends and family and that is absolutely valid to grieve. I was supposed to be spending the day with my dad and my husband out at an animal sanctuary in Santa Rosa, California and those plans are obviously cancelled and it's really hard because I haven't gotten to see my dad since I believe late February when the first cases developed in our county and my dad being 71 decided it was safest for him to start quarantining immediately. So it's been been about two months since I've seen him and obviously today the day this video is going up I was supposed to be spending time with him so it's really hard um, so I decided to kind of push away um, birthday thoughts in my head and do a video that I've always wanted to do as soon as I started a YouTube channel and that is show you guys the makeup look that started my love of makeup. It is a look that was developed because my middle school into high school friend had like the dream big sister who was super cool, wore leather jackets and had like the most killer makeup and wild hair. We all adored her and she took pity on us 14 year olds and took us to MAC back in 2003 for us to get a look done to take us into our high school careers. But it was the first look that made me fall in love with makeup, that made me understand technique, that made me st understand how to like make my eye color pop and so this look is very like dear to my heart even though it is definitely not exactly how I would wear makeup nowadays. I thought it would be really fun to torture myself and make myself go way back um, a lot of years <laughs> and recreate the makeup that I used to wear in high school as close as I can. I have a lot of the things. Some of these things are from that time. Um, some of these powder products are. Um, but I was in theater and so I know how to keep my makeup sanitary. So these have been sanitized and processed and done things too. So that even though these eyeshadows are like how old are these? Seven, 17 years. They're okay to use. <laughs> it's gonna be gross. I don't know if the payoff or the formulas will still be great, so I can't promise that, but I just figured, you know, we could all use some levity, something not so serious. Here is me trying my darndest to recreate my quintessential high school makeup. Do forgive me, it is in the 70s today in the Bay Area, so hopefully my fan noise doesn't bother you, but I couldn't film without it. So back in 2003-ish, we didn't really have eyeshadow primer, at least there was far before the days the uh, Urban Decay Primer Potion was invented and created. And so what I actually used to use as an eyeshadow base because I have really oily lids was my concealer. Back then we didn't really have liquid concealer. I used a like cream pot thing from MAC. I do not have that. So I'm going to use the closest thing I have which is one of the Fenty matchsticks. That's the closest thing I have to like a stick. Um, kind of concealer that would have any sort of similar consistency and so I would put that all over my eyes. My other favorite eyeshadow base back in high school for my more like vampy looks was a uh, black liner pencil just smudged all over. So when I went and got my makeup done at MAC I not only got the eyeshadows but I actually picked up my first ever MAC brushes and that were these two. Um, you can see this brush has been through some stuff and so I picked up these brushes. These were my first brushes and my only brushes for quite some time so if you are newer to makeup or trying to figure out the kind of tools you need or what tools are best for you, a fluffy brush and a flat shaded brush. I still swear by flat shaded brushes, some people don't but it's the only way I can get the most amount of payoff without using my fingers. So taking what I believe <laughs> was the MAC 224 and vanilla eyeshadow and we're just gonna put that all over here. And it's not that different, I think I would just take it down all over here nowadays. The shadow doesn't really do much. Um, I also was the kind of frosty gal. I would put a frosty shade 
all in this area as well. That was that was some choices, but it was the mid 2000s and we loved a good frosted eyeshadow. Do not repeat these things that I did. It was just how I did things. Um, and then for my crease shade, I used, oh my God, I cannot even, I don't know if I wanna show this to you, but like, <laughs> these are old. I cannot read the shadow names. I think this was Hoax, H-A-U-X, Hoax. Um, and that was my first ever crease shade. So at least I started off high school strong. I knew about crease colors. This is a very um, kind of mauve brown shade, and I put this on ham. I did, I vaguely knew of blending, but uh, my skills in makeup were mostly through theater, and in theater you put on as much as you can. And so I just, yeah, my, this was not a nice faux depth to the eye. This was just mauve eyeshadow. I need to like make sure I don't over blend this. To how I would do this now and just leave it how I remember doing. This is long before YouTube tutorials were a thing. So we like obviously had the, the Mac artist give us a lesson and kind of teach us how to do some things. So I definitely remember just the rocking things back and forth. And that was, I didn't know how to like soften the edge. It was just like rock it like this and just hope that kind of looked okay. Oh yeah, that's, that is the powerful it looks more normal to you guys than it does on person. It's, it's not that normal. Yeah, I think I need a little more. My mom was always the one who let me wear whatever kind of makeup I wanted, but my dad was the little more uptight type, so he was like, it has to be naturalistic, it can't be too crazy, you don't want like you to draw attention with it, so this is very neutral colors, very delicate colors, but I definitely found ways as I got older and more into the metal scene how to pump it up for myself. For the lid shade, we have a color that I, I still love and I actually think I should pull it out more, and that is CD Pearl from MAC. This is not my original CD Pearl from high school, so don't be grossed out. That that level. Um, this is probably like my third one. I mean I kept one once where it was like little pebbles inside of this because I loved this shade so much because I was one of those girls in high school who had to wear makeup every day. I would not let people catch me without my makeup and so I went through this a lot of times. And then we're just taking that flat brush and we're gonna put this lovely frosty baby pink shadow all over our lid. And we don't want to blend. Oh god, it's so hard not to blend. I know I didn't blend. She wanted the most impact, so we just kind of patted as much on to get that frost, frosty, <laughs> frosty, frosty, stark lid. Yes, keep her frosty. So the sad thing is that I had a, a computer in high school that I took to college and then when I went to college it got a bunch of viruses. The viruses are so bad it forgot its own operating system and um, I have lost pretty much all of my photos from high school unless they were posted on MySpace or Facebook. Um, I lost all of those photos and I used to do really fun little like makeup looks for myself and take photos in my bedroom like any good teenager. I felt like I was really doing a thing because I had four colors I was using back then and I was like yeah I use four eyeshadows for a look. If you don't use four eyeshadows look what are you even doing? I do not relish showing you this next eyeshadow because yes, this is the original shadow from when I first got this look because it was my outer corner color and so it did not get used as much as obviously the lid color or the crease color. So um, behold my beautiful <laughs> eyeshadow held together with very old like tape and this is Sketch from MAC. Um, yeah, at least I hit pan very long time ago. And because I only had two eyeshadow brushes, I then took my crease brush and just kind of went wild in the corner and kind of gave myself a black eye with this. I at least knew how to blend this a little bit, so it's not going to be as bad as this one look I did in high school where I never blended. For my birthday in high school, um, the present I would ask for was to go to MAC because I was really really wanting to learn makeup and you know develop my collection and develop like a vast array of colors. I want to make sure I had a rainbow in my arsenal and so my mom would take me to MAC every year to get my makeup done and one year this person 
did this look on me, which is really cool. It's like bright orange in the crease and a yellow lid and this graphic outer corner that was unblended and like sharp and crisp done with like a angled flat brush and oh god it was it was rough guys it was <laughs> if you want to see that look next um just let me know but it was I don't know what that person was doing to me um I thought it looked cool <laughs> My friends were always like, why is that not blended? And I was just like, no, this is how it's supposed to be. Oh, self. Blend this a little bit, but not too much. Still it's gotta look like a bruise. Oh yeah, there you go. That is, that is definitely how my eyes looked. It was definitely like, here is one color and here is another. So then the other rule until I was 17 is that I could not wear liquid liner because that was too intense and I had to be like in like an appropriate day and age to be able to wear like really intense look at me makeup though I don't think this is the natural look my dad had in mind. I was allowed to wear a liner which was Max Carbon. Um, it started out as Max MAC print which is a grayer less black but I don't have it and so we're gonna go with carbon which I know I used starting in sophomore year because I would put this as heavy as I could once I got to school because that's when I um, joined my high school metal club. I did some my last video for the LED light where you just take an angled brush and you press along. I did not know how to do wings. Wings were not the thing so we just did a really awkward um, line on the lid that was the same thickness along the entire thing. It never tapered. Don't taper. Just make it a very thick, awkward line on your eye. Oh, holy throwback. Okay. I'm having flashbacks of AP exams and rude girls in the hallway. I will show you guys a close up when I'm done. You can just see the majesty of this. So I'm putting on the globbiest mascara I have, which is like a Marc Jacobs one to just kind of coat my lashes in something crispy and crunchy. Because I didn't ex discover great lash until like my senior year. So we're gonna put on something just kind of terrifying first. Oh yeah. Oh, those look terrible. Okay. Yay! Mission accomplished! And of course, not curled, so they just stick straight out from my eyeball. I didn't do eyebrows. I plucked my eyebrows into oblivion. I made them so nice and thin. Not like 90s thin brows, but definitely thin because my frenemy from middle school told me that I had caveman brows and that if I still wanted to be friends with her I needed to pluck my brows and uh, I did and it was a terrible life choice. We'll move on to skin now. I was obsessed with MAC strobe cream so I have a little sample here and that is what I thought of as moisturizer. Um, I didn't start using moisturizer till probably about 2014 and I always wondered why my skin drank my foundation because my skin was thirsty um, and I thought I had oily skin and that turns out I have very dry skin. We're gonna put MAC strobe cream all over our face as moisturizer as I did. Oh it still smells good. Oh, the nostalgia of the scent. Uh, definitely didn't have makeup primer. I also decided to put on my concealer first before foundation. So we're going to go back to the matchstick. I'm going to warm it up on the back of my hand or else it'll make this look look worse. Um, but that's not fair to how bad my makeup in high school actually was. Um, this also might be to a proper tone because I definitely wore like super light concealer under my eyes. Just rub that purple you know, trying to rub it away from your under eye. I at least understood that much. So now we come to the part that I still cringe about when I think that this is how I used to do this. I used to put on my foundation very thickly with literally a paintbrush. <laughs> I mean, it is a foundation brush and even Real Techniques made this some years ago. I have not touched a brush like this in probably five or six years, but this is the kind of brush I used to use and I would just paint on my foundation. So I'm taking a sample of MAC's Pro Longwear foundation. It's the closest I, I, I I think I used to use Studio Fix, but I don't have a sample of Studio Fix. I have this. <laughs> this was in my arsenal. So we're just gonna paint on this foundation um, and try. I wanted to cover my freckles. 
I just wanted, I don't even know, this foundation is like full coverage enough to do that. I don't know if I took it down my neck. Oh, uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna say for the thing of high school life that I definitely at least went under my chin, but I don't think I blended down my neck. I think that was definitely something I heard more of once YouTube came around. Oh, uh, God, oh. Uh, why did we think this was okay? Oh god, that edge on that eyeshadow is so bad. Yes, looks like face paint. And my foundation was always too light for me in the hopes that in photos I would photograph paler. My 31 year old skin cannot <laughs> handle this. Oh, it's not green. This wasn't enough. I used to take um, Ben Nye's neutral set and rub it over everywhere on her done foundation in the hopes of blending and not looking like I just went over my face with a paintbrush and some house paint. I did kind of bronze back then even though I wanted to be pale but I understood the concept of bronzer. So this is my original one and only uh, Trace Gold from MAC. Definitely hit pan on this puppy. Same brush that we put our powder on because of course. And then you just kind of rub this apparently like this, no nice thing, we just rub, rub it like this. Also, uh, like an original, um, Dame, this is my first ever blush that I owned, um, Dame blush from MAC. I'm surprised I have not hit pan on this. Um, I can see like the divot in the pan where I've definitely worn it down, but uh, surprised I never hit pan because it's the only blush I wore until college. But yeah, we're just rubbing this like all over our cheek. Like you're flushed from running in pee. Yes. We're gonna zoom in because I want to show you what the eyes look like. Also, I want you to see how bad this lip is because this lip was iconically bad for me in high school. But it's so quintessential mid aughts that I want to share it with the internet. So come a little closer. Let me horrify you in HD. So that's this eye look. It's great. <laughs> the beautiful, um, pushed on black liner. You can see how great this is going for my skin right now. Especially just this delicate area that just feels very punished. And the like not showing upness of the blush bronzer combo. Alright, let's get to these lips that no one wants to see. I don't have the lip pencil I used to use, but I used to use Spice lip pencil from MAC. I have this random color pop lippy to go called Crack Me Up that is a very similar color line very specifically the outer lines of your lips. Don't blend. Don't blend. Yes. 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 I have repurchased this since because obviously no MAC lip gloss could last from 2003 and I also went through several tubes but I did repurchase this a couple of years ago out of nostalgia for it and this is the lip gloss in Oyster Girl. Can you see how this is not going to go well? So then you take this frosty, frosty lip gloss over this lip liner like so. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Definitely concentrated in the the center though. Make sure. Yeah. Make sure that happens and there's like stringies. Oh. I, I do wonder why Mac even makes this formula anymore. We're gonna zoom out. I'm gonna take my hair down. And we're gonna assess the damage. This is how my makeup looked when I was in high school. Um, you're gonna have to take away the hot pink hair. I was a very caramel headed kid. I would definitely wear these colors now. Um, I definitely take have a nice dramatic wing. I would definitely tight line now. Um, I do some fun colors on the bottom to help just break up. This just looks like here are two shadows even though I use four, five to do this look. It just screams here's two colors. Um, so there's definitely a lot more blending, a lot different application I would use now. These colors are still beautiful on blue eyes. So I still think that it had good theories behind it. Just the way I applied them. Um, this lip is just un unsalvageable. There is no reason to have such 
a lie like this I don't think it makes my lips look thicker I don't think my lips need to look thicker it just makes me feel sticky and gross um the skin makes me look like I have a rash I don't feel beautiful right now I am definitely proud of myself for having developed my skills and at least getting interested in makeup and wanting to strive to always be more informed I don't think this was a bad bad place to start makeup wise in my life just I just wish it was better <laughs> Uh, and I can't wait to take this off. I hope you guys had a bit of a chuckle and a little bit of um, those of you who are in the 30 plus range remembering the early aughts fondly. I, guess. <laughs> I actually have a playlist of like songs I remember specifically being played at my middle school dances. I'm gonna leave that down below in the description box so you, if any of you want a like, little nostalgia trip um, it's there for you you can remember the sweaty disgusting gyms and having to dance like this with your crush and getting rejected from your crush because he just wanted to dance with the popular girls oh boy um, yeah I'm gonna go wash my face um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always I will see you next time bye